So guys, uh, let's get into another one of the C Games group stage replays uh, between the Terran and the Zerg. Introducing our players here on the bottom right. This is gonna be the Red Zerg of Hai, aka Vietnam's Asura. In the meantime, his opponent on the top left. We are gonna get that Thailand Terran in the blue. It's gonna be Prasa Twitch or Strike. Strike taking that first win a while ago on Nightshade. This time here on a Triton, we go already going for that standard wall. And in the meantime, it's gonna be more or less scouting here for Astronaut, really producing anything as of yet into the hatchery. Though we go onto that natural, getting some drones as well to try and keep the economy up. So, hatch first set up here for our Red Zerg. In that previous game, all about a creeping barrage, all about coming closer and closer to his opponents. And those doors really packing a bunch, really that is the point of having those infestors. You need that parasite and it really just goes to show onto the late game, the Zerg doesn't have the strongest, uh, doesn't have the strongest late game unless you're really using abilities to bring you back. You'd really see the greats like Serral, especially like Serral versus Innovation Nation Wars, man. Like Vipers, Infestors, Yoinking, Taking, Bungles, all of that jazz. It makes a big difference for a good Zerg to be a great Zerg. I can't really rely on Hydras, on Lurkers, on those things as much. Especially, you can't rely on Roach Ravager late games. So you need to make that transition. Still though, here comes a Strike right now. Getting the Scout sees that natural hatchery coming online. Spawning pool will get spotted as well. So the Terran can plan accordingly, going for that second base already. Interesting enough, he is going to be opening that one up for an attachment. So it's going to be a layer one. Probably going to go into a Marine as well to go for that defense. Still though, the Reaper trying to fly on in. I was really expecting him to actually put up the upgrade already to try to put that add-on in. A Reactor Tech to double bump Marines instead of sending the first one in. But maybe, just maybe, this is gonna be Ranger, uh, this is gonna be Strike rather, looking to find the opportunity. Looking to find a way to actually get a shot. If the Overlord gets too close, we'll be able to fend it off. But Strike now, looking to strike at the heart of that natural, looking to take care of that Zergling as well. And that is going to be high, losing one already. Crash Twitch sending it. That's uh, you call this that Reaper lying on in yet again. Here comes the Queen right now. Just comes on that from that natural. We'll be able to fend the Jet Packet here off onto the Abyss. Anyway, Hatchery going to be set on up here for Astra yet again. Looking for that third. In the meantime, though, Command Center is set on up here for Strike. And we are going to see the reactor that we were talking about a while ago. So that one lone Marine really just looking to be that bodyguard. It seems like he's the only one that will be protecting the second base from any kind of aggression. And an absolute hero Marine there and then. But finally, the factory going to get that reactor double pumping those Hellions. It really was just Strike realizing or trying to make sure that Astro was not going to go for that Roach opening yet again. Now with Hellions, going to be able to go on to those mineral lines, cook up those drones pretty easily. And honestly, the Roach Warren here for Astro not going to be the earliest. He will have to rely on some micro with those Zerglings to make an advantage, make a decision to make a little bit of that trap action. But he does have two queens in the forefront. Now here comes the Hot Wheels. They're looking to beat on down and beat that up. Does Astra actually know that Strike is ready with that factory attack? Seems like it's not the case. And maybe that's not what, what that one Marine was for. Putting that one in the way. Not allowing the Overlord to really get much done. And there was no Zergling Scout a while ago from Astra as well. So now these Hellions will get unscouted on Contested whatsoever. Still though, that Reaper does go down, really trying to be a pesk. And now we do see some Lurgings dying as well, but now four Hellions are on the way. This might be difficult here for Astro, but he is already sending out a whole squadron and more. Almost a dozen Roaches in production. Should be good here for Prasser Twit to actually back on out and decide to not go for this instead. It's way too dangerous to actually come close to those Roaches in the first place. Zergings are going to get cooked. So though. Strike does not know that this is coming, and here we go, the Roach is already onto that high ground, forcing the Hellions to back on out. Surprise, surprise, but even better here from Strike. He went for that Fusion Core, and this is really what scouting is all about, especially in TVC. That Battlecruiser Rush, getting that Fusion Core really early, unscouted, unmitigated, and if you're not ready, if not in position, this has to be game over. So can Asura actually react in time. Queens are actually gonna get pulled from the main to the natural. 
Doesn't have that much DPS because the Roach is going to be in the front line instead. He's looking to wall on it though. Widow Mines are double pumped as well. There's going to be a make or break moment here for Strike so far. Here comes the first Widow Mine getting a hit on the Roach. It does go. Still doesn't have Drilling Claw, so these are going to be exposed. And that one Supply Depot burning on down already. So the walls of Jericho, the walls of Supply Depots will get busted. Still, the SCVs are going to get pulled. The Mule desperately tried to repair that one as well. So the Marines have to get on out. Yamato Common be being researched at the same time. But the Bow Cruiser will be into the skylines yet again. And Asra has to make this attack work, or this will be a tactical jump to remember. Still, the laser cannons are shooting. SCVs are pulled immediately. And Asra unable to really react in time. He's going for some drones instead. Still, the BC getting three hits left, right, and center. Damn, it's so difficult here for a strike right now. He has lost every worker he has. He's trying to get away with that last handful. And still, damage being done here by Astra. Battle Cruiser up in the air. He doesn't have much though. He will be desperate to get those wheels to get a little more of that economy. So overall, this attack here from Astra working out in the sense to cripple the opponent's economy. And that last Hellion trying to make it happen. No, it's going to get surrounded. And actually strike in such a difficult position in this instance. Because Astra can just decide to build some Spore Crawlers instead. This Orbital Command in a bad spot. Command Center now trying to build some Sim City. And in this scenario, Mules are really the name of the game. But 38 kills on this BC. Absolute hero right here, right now. Still, he's gonna need a mule to send over to that natural, gets the salvage on out to build an SEV. And overall, Asura making that attack work really well, busting down the wall. That was really just Strike. Strike was just looking to make this battle cruiser work. And now he does have a second, that's really interesting. He goes for two BCs, he's on a low economy state. And desperately, he needs to repair his second base to be able to produce more and more of these flyers. Still though, we are going to get some sparklers here enough for High Asra looking to be ready for this approach, but he isn't even on tier 2 yet. He was on Hatchery Tech the whole time in that attack. He's going to need more and more units. He's going to need maybe these Hydras to actually go for the fight. Some Ravagers, enough gas to get some vials on. But even play it safe, play some Corruptors up in the air. They're pretty tanky. Valcruisers have a fast DPS, a fast attack speed. And but they don't have as much damage as you would expect in terms of a per hit instance. So here comes Strike, looking to strike at the hearts, strike at those production lines. Those spar crawlers are a little pesky, but you know what can't deal with that Demonic Cannon, which he actually doesn't have. He canceled that Demonic Cannon a while ago because he needed that resource to queue. He needed those ready. He needed to reinforce, get some more Hellions late a while ago. But having these two BC might be enough. The drones getting cooked along the way. The Roach Warren getting hampered as well. And the Spore Crawler trying to get in a better position in this instance. Queenstone getting some free hits. And the movement of the Crawler Strike come closer and closer to these BCs. At the same time, those Zerglings forcing the Orbital Command to fly on up. But the wall is still standing here and now for Strike. Astra in the meantime struggling against these two BC. Desperate to try and get some more anti-air. Two Spore Crawlers, one Spire looking to be produced as well. But it seems like the main base will have to be abandoned. There's the cancel already. Can't finish up that Spire anytime soon. That Spore Crawler also will go down. And these BCs having free reign in the skies. 67 kills in total. 54 and 13. Looking for some more, maybe two more will be nice enough. And that is gonna be the queen gang hampered. No transfusion there. 68! And we are gonna get the nice number of them all. 69, no, even 70 kills between these two BCs. Sometimes, guys, when you're on a trip, you just wanna sing the 99 balls on beer on the wall. I have a new song for you 99 kills on the BC. But now this BC, the hero BC, might go down. Can it please stay alive? I'm so, so praying for this BC to still stay on up. Maybe a mule sent in from the heavens will keep the hero BC with 59 kills alive in this whole game. And at the same time, all the minerals going into this anti-air instance, all of that. This is high desperate to try and kill this BC. Can it stay alive? We're gonna get in position. Tactical jump to get on away. Lightspeed is your friend apparently. And it seems like Brasser quit. Really trying to maximize that DPS. Takes care of the extractor. Looks to get on away. Time to jump. And time to get on out. So overall, 
Seems like the two PCs actually working out in favor. Strike not out of this yet. Able to make... What do you call that? What do you say? Just basically he's able to make riches out of nothing. Absolutely essential play there from Strike and Astro really unable to do much about it. Was ill prepared. Didn't have those queens in position and now we are going to get Yamato Cannon being upgraded onto that fusion core yet again. Sell so, Orbital Command for the second time. Landing on down. He really needs his second base to get some more production going. So though I feel like Astra is missing an opportunity to take care of the supply depots who might even cripple the supply count here for Strike. But Strike playing that Hellion game yet again. It was so effective a while ago on Nightshade, burning everything down. Especially with the fact that carapaces weren't upgraded at all. At the same time though. This is pretty much what the Zerg needs to do, get some more Corruptors into the fray. And at the, and on the converse end, if he sees more Corruptors in the sky, that is going to be faster with deciding, okay, time to go for a ground-based composition, make these Flyers useless, and force them to turn into Broodlords instead. He doesn't even have the Greater Spire though, it's going to be a little difficult. The army is going to be all about air-to-air -air combat, but the ground is going to be more or less the saving grace here for Strike in this instance. Corruptors right now looking for an opportunity. They can also go for the Corruption onto the buildings. They'll decide to go for this Orb of the Command. He, he, he knows that the economy really rests on those mules flying on down. SEVs looking to get in position. The Hellions are brought back for no real reason whatsoever. Corruptors now looking for the hits. One Marine, two of them are in fact desperately trying to take care of that Corruptor. With the mines, looking to burrow on down, not gonna get the lock on that they need. But now with three BCs in the air, it's gonna be a wild juice chase here and now between Fraser Twit and High. Strike. Giving chase as much as possible. Ring around the Rosie apparently. But keep an eye out on these Hellions. These have been value Hellions so far in terms of units. It's three BCs versus seven Corruptors. Should be still a little handleable, but a little bit of a handle here for Fraser Twit. And now on to the middle line we go yet again, but the Roaches. Pending that one up, Corruptor is going to be there as well. We're going to try and intimidate the opposition. Interesting movement there from Trasfrit Strike, trying to force a cascade on, but it's not going to happen because the Roach is way too tacky in this scenario. Looking at how much they've lost, it looks like even that Astro is on behind 7.2k minerals lost, 51 drones to 48. It's not over yet, that's for sure. And with those BCs flying in the air, Strike is trying to make a case to try and come this back looking to rebuild the wall he's now using missile turrets as part of the process just in case the corruptors or they turn into broodlers or whatnot still though the marine at the end position with the mine is there as well the more hellions waiting on the offset corruptors now flying on around yet again and by this point in time astra has to decide if he's gonna go for the attack or if he's gonna wait for those bcs to show on up but the fact is with this many orbital commands and getting some mules produced again and again and again it really is a strike coming ahead of this one so the refinery is now being rebuilt engineering bay on behind and into that third base we go yet again two base Charon versus three base zerg Pretty even in all fronts. Here we go though with Yamato. Tactical jump to get on the way. Just trying to pick off one, maybe two of these corruptors at a time. In the meantime, here comes Astra yet again looking for the attack. That's a number of corruptors that can really intimidate those BCs in the first place. Still though, Winamine's in position in the front. Doesn't have Drilling Claws though, so it isn't going to be hidden anytime soon. Instead, more or less, there you go with the lock on. Takes care of one. Sacrificial Lamb there, courtesy Baha'i. And into Ravagers we go yet again. He can actually go for the Bile instead. Take care of these Windermines. The They're pretty much exposed on the ramp anyway. Does he actually see it? Yes, he does. As soon as he comes closer and closer. There we go with the lock on already. It actually smashes into Corruptors. And what I wanted to do maybe was to try and get them close enough and back on that. But lingered a little too long. The Windermines did expose themselves to try and lock on. Just didn't happen anyway. Still strike. Staying on that high ground. It really is... The Blue Terran playing the defense. It really is him trying to play power defense in this scenario. With a mind though, might get hampered. Will it go down? There you go. It does fall siege down. Still getting value from behind. And here comes the Hellions looking for some pokes as well. Battle Cruiser is now in interception mode. Looking for a pick off or two. Wants to go for the at the air. First and foremost, Bile connects onto that last BC. And the Viking is there to try and help on out. The air unit is now flying on down. Gonna get vaporized by the Yamato. You can see the corpse of the Corruptor flying into the chasm instead. And Brasser twits. Pushing forward, knowing the skies are his. 
and Astro come back in this instance. He will try to go for some co more corruptors, but by this point in time, he has gotten stuck in a feedback loop, producing and producing, trying to get more anti air as much as possible. He hasn't even gotten hive, so these corruptors are not going to go for any kind of anti crown sentiments anytime soon. Queen still caught out in the open, will go down. Ravager's trying to go for the battle, hits his units yet again. Very sloppy micro there from Astra, and he will get punished with that extra, extra value taken by the BCs. You know, this Overlord has been here the whole time. It hasn't really got much value. Hellion so on the flip side. Gain more value instead. Flying on the South Quadrant. Takes care of some more drones. Sure. Hellion do go down. But what cost? Because high right now. 29 workers to 31. One. Only two bases really working out here. For our Red Zerg. In the meantime, it really has been the Terran. Slowly but surely taking ground. Taking dominion against his opposition. He's still been staying on BCs, but with these BCs, it has really been the show, basically. There has not been done, nothing being done by Asra. He really is just going for as many units as he can. It really, and it just hasn't worked out for this Red Zerg. Now on to the third base, looking to scout it out. Doesn't see it on the north side, will expect it onto that west ramp instead. In the meantime though, this third base is under a lot of trouble because the Hellions are in position yet again. Looking to find the advantage, looking to find the opportunity to go for the cook onto those drones. There you go! Five of them go down immediately. And value yet again here for Prasser Twits. Hi, even going for the all army commander, sending everything back. And the problem right now with using that kind of micro, he's trying to get in position, he's trying to get these units at a point where he can actually intercept. But instead, with one Hellion run on in yet again, that's free Yamato, taking up Corruptors. Tactical like jump still available, flying around, using that extra movement speed, using that fact that he can shoot while moving. So, so effective here for Fast Twit, microwing these battle cruisers as much as possible, saving that tactical like jump unless it is absolutely necessary. Time to get out of dodge. There you go, getting on away. That one second not doing much in his micro. Mech play is a bad. I would love to see him go for some more armories though. At the same time, it really has turned into the Astra slowly but surely running out of resources. Infestation fit now in this instance. And it is the same case as before. You'd love to get some infestors, maybe get that neuroparasite. Or at the very least, unlock hive tech to help you out. Get some good upgrades. Get some more hydros, get some uh, corruptors can be effective with the brood lords. And plus three so effective as well to get more DPS going. But I don't think I've seen either side get some real upgrades in this, this game, which is very interesting. Neither side going for upgrades. They have an engineering bay, being bay here for the Blue Terran. I don't see much here for Astra actually. The Hellions though, yet again, doing the same old thing. It really has turned into a feedback loop kind of game. Astra, producing units. Strike. Striking at the economy line. Able to macro in behind. And eventually by this point in time, it is going to be advantage here for our Blue Terran. We do see some Evo Chambers now here for Asura. But by this point, might be too late. Plus one on melee and range attack yet again. And really not getting that Carapace, I feel, is a big hamper. As here we go with the Yamatos yet again into the skyline. Take care of those Kree Corruptors. Ravagers desperately trying to get some DPS going. But it's just not the case. Bal now landing on down yet again. Completely misses its mark. And now these BCs having free reign to do whatever they want. They see the Queens. They know they want to conquer those Queens. Yes, Queen going down one and two. Looking for a third. Bal though looking to try and get the discus hit not gonna happen sometimes the zerg really needs to work on that discus toss but by this point in time you can see that the human race and its ingenuity its technology its conquers going for that main base yet again this time just smashing it down with absolute impunity nothing to contest and by this point strike is just microwing he's not really producing anymore he knows that this game is his to take and GG is called strike takes the win taking that series 2-0 BCs man the saving grace and I feel like if Astra only responded properly against those BCs positioned properly that was a win for him but it just didn't happen strike with through grit making it happen macroing in behind it was a little slow there are really many opportunities that high that Astra could have punished that but it just wasn't the case